Kelly Pavlik against Sergio Martinez. And you can see the seven-year age advantage for Pavlik. We see here a measurement that says that's a four-inch height advantage. To the naked eye, maybe it doesn't look like four inches, but that's what happened when they were measured. Arm length, a half-inch advantage for Pavlik, measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in under the 160-pound limit. And Kelly Pavlik overnight has rehydrated back up to 178. Remember, Emmanuel Stewart says he's really a super middleweight. He's gone up 18 plus pounds overnight and will have an 11 pound unofficial advantage over Martinez coming into the ring. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Kelly Pavlik, Sergio Martinez fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Division. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. A case of cut is caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell at any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim! This is the 49th fight of Sergio Martinez's career, but many American fans were unfamiliar with Martinez before seeing him on December 5 in the small room here in the Boardwalk Hall and a bicycle racer says that he never went into a boxing gym until age 20 when he was advised to do so to help condition himself for soccer. Instantly, he fell in love, and within a month, he was boxing only. But the stamina base, which proceeds from his background in bicycle racing and soccer, allows him to fight in a tremendously high-energy style. And now here comes Kelly Pavlik, and there is the Youngstown reception for him for those fans who've made the trek down from Ohio. Kelly Pavlik had a stationary bicycle in his living room when we visited him yesterday, attesting to the difficulty he now has of making middleweight. Coming in at 178, you're talking about cruiserweight territory already. That's a situation that is created by having this almost 30-hour difference on the way into the actual fight. About 15, 20 years ago, that didn't exist. You weighed in on the morning of the actual fight. And I have to believe, if we were to tell Sergio Martinez, you're outweighed 11 pounds, he would say, fine, my game here is speed anyway. But Absolutely. you say it's yep. good for Pavlik, Emmanuel, and we shall see. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Atlantic City's Boardwalk Hall, courtesy of Caesars Atlantic City, where tonight, Bob Barham's top rank incorporated in association with Debella Entertainment and Corona Extra are proud to present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the Ring Magazine, WBO, WBC, Middleweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Chairman Tony Orlando, Boxing Commissioner Aaron Davis, WBC President Jose Suleiman, WBO President Francisco Paco Barcarcel, and ringside, the three judges scoring this contest are Craig Metcalf, Barbara Perez, and Roberto Ramirez. And inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action at the bell, David Fields. And now for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world on HBO. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get her. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with silver, officially weighing 159, one half pounds. His professional record, 44 victories, including 24 knockouts, with only two defeats, and he has two draws. Originally from Quilmes, Argentina, but now training and fighting out of Oxnard, California. The challenger, current WBC super welterweight, champion of the world, Sergio La Maravilla Martinez. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with gold, officially weighing also 159, one half pounds. 
Although he has one loss as a professional, he is undefeated in the middleweight division with a perfect record of 36 fights, 36 victories, including 32 knockouts. He's the fighting pride of Youngstown, Ohio, the reigning, defending, WBO, WBC, and ring middleweight champion of the world, Kelly the Ghost. Okay, Sergio Kelly, we scheduled to box 12 rounds for the WBC, WBO, middleweight championship over the world. I've gone over the rules in the dress room. I expect you to obey my commands at all times. Most of all, protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. Good luck. After their fight, Bernard Hopkins said to Kelly Pavlik, your destiny is at middleweight, presumably because of his size. In Argentina, According to Martinez, the middleweight championship is the queen of championships because of their great tradition down there. Because it belonged to Carlos Manzón. And interestingly, Martinez, partially because he moved away from Argentina for better economic opportunity in Spain a long time ago, acknowledges that no matter how much he accomplishes in the ring, no matter how great he becomes, he could never be Carlos Manzón in Argentina. An honest statement. Meanwhile, round one begins with Martinez moving and Havlik looking for a chance. Looking at Kelly Pavlik, he does look like he's about a good 10 or 12 pounds uh, larger than Martinez to me. Martinez is very agile, moving very well. And Kelly, I think at this stage, is fighting the perfect fight. It was as Martinez, but this is just the first minute of the first round. Martinez has circled both ways so far. If he circles to his right, he's going toward Kelly Pavlik's left hook, but away from Pavlik's right hand. Obviously, the opposite direction produces the opposite effect. Which one would you do, Emmanuel? Well, I never got so wrapped up on the changing directions as a lot of people do. I think it's just a speed to in and out and different movement. But right now, Kelly is doing one thing, is, is working his jab. But he needs to work it more. He's got to be very, very careful that he doesn't get caught with a counter punch as he's coming forward. Martinez has already shown you how adeptly he can go in and out, get a couple of punches in when he gets to Pavlik, and then move back out, and usually both in and out as an angle. At an angle, he doesn't go straight forward. That's the closest Pavlik has come yet to landing a right hand. There's blood around the left eye of Kelly Pavlik. Already, apparently, a right-hand punch from Martinez has brought blood to the eyebrow of Kelly Pavlik. Martinez is sharp with his hook. Very sharp, and he's fighting a very intelligent fight, but I think Kelly's fighting a smart fight to at the stage also. A little body shot for Martinez. A couple upstairs. Manages to get in and get out once again. Martinez believes he has to be more aggressive than he has been previously in his American fights in order to get a decision. He accepts the reality that as a visitor, the visiting team, he's not going to get an even break. Havlik cuffs Martinez behind the head, throws him to the canvas. Martinez perhaps reacting a little bit more than the crowd would have thought was necessary round one comes to a close and it was dominated mostly by martinez's movement yeah by the movement i don't think no one landed that much of a difference in clean punches but he looked better let's go turn your head then cali moving i didn't even see a fucking punch there 
All right, let's see. Take the bottom. Okay. Take your time. Just keep working forward. Yeah, I'm leaving okay. the up. What's that? Tire himself out. Yeah, listen, let him keep working, let him keep moving. You got to throw the feints at him, though, okay? Right. We can't work. Sergio, be patient. Don't be desperate. It's a long term job, long term job. Relax, work little by little. Keep working, work that hand to the body. To the body and then up top, okay, baby? All right. And always on the outside, move on the outside. Don't get into his game because he's going to put you down and choke you a little bit. Right Combi box numbers in round one. Martinez 11 of 36. Pavlik 6 of 30. Once again, primary element of the round, Martinez's movement, which limited both fighters' punch outputs. It's just the tiniest of scratches above the left eye of Pavlik, and for now, the bleeding has been stopped. Watch your head, watch your head inside, man. All right, let him go, let him go. Stop punching, stop punching. Come on, man. Two solid left hands by Martinez. Havlick is left hunting for a target as Martinez again gets in and out. Pops Pavlik with a right hand, moves away again. Martinez is movement and, 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 and the cleaner and sharper punches are beginning to bother Kelly Dingles. Kelly's a very good, strong fighter, but he's never been really that much of a well coordinated guy. I guess that's the price you pay when you be exceptionally tall for a weight division. Whereas Martinez, you only need to watch one round to see, he's an athlete through and through. He's a natural athlete, extremely well coordinated. They meet, their heads almost come together. Not sure whether Pavlik landed a punch but Martinez did get left-hand leather on the path. There's another left hand by Martinez. Martinez is getting into his rhythm right now, and it seems like Kelly is, is trying to find his. He has not been able to solve the movement of Martinez at this stage. Well, I don't know that there was anybody who thought that Kelly Pavlik could really handle the speed of Martinez. The, the idea was to neutralize it with intelligent watch fighting, head, head. cutting off the ring, and landing big shots. That hasn't happened yet. You know, what, what we all keep forgetting that even though Kelly Pellett has this great knockout record, he's really not, to me, a devastating puncher. He gradually and systematically normally has worn his opponents down. What he is is a good finisher when he gets you in trouble. He knows how to put his punches together if he's got you compromised. And that's what produced some of the knockouts. Right hand by Pavlik. First thing. First thing Martinez did that might have been seen as a mistake. He left his head un un uncovered. But he feels that his speed and natural coordination, he can get away with a lot of things. And as the fight draws on, that's getting to be more dominant, his speed and coordination. He has dominated the second round. He has started the blood flowing again around the eye of Kelly Pavlik. He has doubled Pavlik's punch output in the round. So far, Martinez is doing what he wants to do. And they are fighting his fight. Getting closer with the right hand, and his fans recognize it. Pavlik is very good at analyzing and breaking down an opponent's strengths and weaknesses, but, the, but he's unable to do anything about the, the quickness. You got, listen to me. You have to double the jab. You got to get closer to him by double the jab, but don't extend it. That's what he's doing. You're extending yourself, just like he did with Williams, though. You're extending yourself instead of saying, calm, bend your knees and double that jab and get closer. Okay? And throw to 3 2. Okay, quit worrying about chasing him with the big punches. We got to step him down, get him to the body. You got to get him to the head, go up and down, down and up. All right? Don't get it in your head, we can't get off. We'll get off. All right? Okay? No, I don't want to hear. You're doing a phenomenal job. Phenomenal job. Where's the bucket? Where's the water? Water. Spit to the right. Everything's good. Fascinating comments from trainer Jack Lowe to Kelly Pavlik between rounds two and three, Emmanuel. Don't get it in your head that you're not going to get off. Already Lowe is worried that Pavlik will get discouraged. I can see that right away. And, you know, we didn't get to hear the end of his response that Kelly was speaking. I didn't hear it. Really. He was beginning to say something. But, you know, I always look at the faces of the guys between rounds, and Martinez is very happy, very comfortable with what's going on, loves the fight, the way it's moving. 
Kelly is not comfortable with the situation at all. CompuBox numbers on power in round two. Martinez 15 out of 26. Pavlik 7 out of 13. There's going to have to be a significant right, go, power differential go, on, in favor of Pavlik if they're going to keep fighting this way for him to have a chance to win the fight. He believes he has the power differential. He just hasn't landed a shot yet that will show it to us. It's not a shot, I believe, that's going to make the difference in this fight. He has to land shots, and he shows no ability at the moment to do that. But he's, what, he's got to be able to slow him down in the first half of the fight in order to get him in range in the second half of the fight. But unless he starts hitting him more, it, you know, Martinez is going to do this all night long. As I said before the fight earlier, I said this is the computer print out of the worst opponent for Kelly because the movement. Kelly has had a lot of knockouts, but those guys were guys who all went straight back. They was using short guys, very little mobility. The only one I can think of with mobility was Bernard, who wasn't the fastest guy, but he was smart. And what, what Martinez is doing is moving often to his right. He's stepping over on the outside of the left foot of Kelly Pallet. And Kelly seems to have a problem making those transitions and pivots. But Martinez doesn't need or hasn't gone to school on what Hopkins did. Hopkins just showed that clever boxing can neutralize Pavlik. Yeah. And he's showing that speed and cleverness. Yeah. But Maybe he can do more than that. Cleverness, craftiness, all, and those are the two elements and the right, words so that I don't think Kelly likes to deal with. Yep, Martinez has his own way of doing it. It's not the Hopkins plan, although it bears some similar features. It's the Martinez plan, and incidentally, in case you're wondering about the, about the arrogance of fighting constantly with his hands below his waist, that's his style. He does it all the time. I sense a little bit that Pavlik is closing the distance yes, think, more yes. in this round. Yeah, he's showing a lot more urgency now, and he's just trying to forget about trying to box this pressure and making his attacks be closer together instead of having about 30 seconds between. I think this is a fairly good round for Kelly, whether he wins it or not. He got back into the fight mentally, or seemed to. He pushing him backwards. Do you understand me? What's that? No, he didn't. He didn't. This is what I'm telling you. You got to keep pushing him backwards, but let your hands go. You got to throw the three twos. You got to quit chasing that fucking head, though. Yes. You understand me? Quit chasing that fucking head. All he's doing is moving. He wants to try to stop and catch us coming in. You understand? You have to. You have to be ready. You got to time this kid coming in. You can't pull out. Okay? Here we see Martinez pull back and use a counter punch, taking advantage of Kelly being out of balance when he punches. That was the same type of move that he used to score a knockdown over Paul Williams. And there's Paul Williams right there, seated in row three, kind of a third man in the ring because both guys talk about wanting to fight him uh, after this fight. Copy box numbers in round three, Pavlik 11 out of 48, cows, Martinez man, 8 out of 38, cows, man, let's go. Pavlik 8 of 19 on, power, so significantly better round for Kelly than the two preceding rounds. Harold Addy had it through three. Look at him, three to nothing, 30 to 27, Sergio Martinez. Jim, I gotta tell you, this guy, when we talk about ring generalship, this guy is the epitome of ring generalship. I mean, he circles back and forth, keeps Pavlik off balance, gets inside just like he did there, gets off good solid shots, and gets the heck out of there before Pavlik can hit him. And that's ring generalship. That's what it's all about. Sergio Martinez controlling the ring, bagging him with good shots. I thought Pavlik did better in the third round, but I didn't think he did enough to win around. Three to nothing, Sergio Martinez. That time Pavlik trapped Martinez in the corner and got in a left hook. And he gets in a body shot there before they clinch. And a, and a nice shoulder elbow on top of that. Solid right hand to the chest by Pavlik. But and I, that may reflect that Jack Lowe told him to quit headhunting. But I, I think Kelly's having a good fight just right. He's, he's being more aggressive. 
picking up the tempo and fighting with a lot more intensity. Realizing that he can't sit back and just outbox Martinez. Martinez is very talented and he can't, he can't beat him at a distance. He's doing exactly what he should do. He's at least presenting more of an impression than he did in the first couple of rounds that Martinez is threatened, that he's in danger somehow because of Kelly closing in. First couple of rounds, it just didn't appear that Pavlik would get there. Now, once again, the blood begins to flow from above Kelly's left eye. Watch the back, watch the back. Good left hand by Martinez. And another, and another. So he's, 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 yeah, he's pivoting so much, and Kelly's having a problem making his pivots and punching at the same time. Pavlik missed over the top of the right hand. Martinez popped him with the right hand counter punch. Couple more small lands for Martinez. Pavlik oh, finally man, hammers man, him with one right man. hand, and Martinez smiles as if to say, oh, so he landed a punch. stages of round four. Earlier tonight, Philadelphia welterweight prospect Mike Jones in the silver and black trunks scored an easy win over a uh, an overmatched opponent from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And uh, this is an unbeaten young prospect from Philadelphia whom a lot of people see as a potential future star in the welterweight division. Another TKO victory against an outmatched opponent tonight. Larry, what did you think? He's a Philadelphia fighter. He's a big welterweight, good movement, good hand speed, good fighting instincts, defends himself well. Uh, he hasn't faced serious opposition, but so far he looks like he's got a shot. Average copy box numbers per round through four. Pavlik nine out of 39. He averaged 60 plus punches thrown per round against Meldrick Taylor. He's landing 24% here. Martinez, 15 out of 43. Those are pretty much his normal stats. He throws about 50 punches per round, and he lands at about a 30% rate. Harold, you call this ring generalship. I call it bicycle riding, which is what he used to do. You know, he's the kind of opponent <laughs> about whom I can imagine a lot of people complaining, oh, he runs, you know, he doesn't really want to fight. The trouble is that he winds up throwing more punches than you do. So it's hard to make that argument. I agree. He doesn't give you, his opponent, a chance to punch very much either. He fights when he wants to, which is not when you want to. And he doesn't want to fight all that much, that's for sure. Not against a guy like Pavlik, who outweighs him 11 pounds unofficially tonight. I think Kelly is fighting very good by keeping the pressure on right now. So even if he's being outboxed slightly by Martinez, he still may get the benefit of the doubt from the judges sometimes because it sometimes looks like Martinez, as Larry was saying, is actually almost on a bicycle running instead of boxing. Well, I agree with you because I think what Kelly Pavlik is doing creates at least the possibility that Martinez will tire. Despite his amazing stamina base, it's just really hard to do this kind of thing round after round, moment after moment, and particularly when you're being pressured. And even though it shouldn't be said, for boxing in Atlantic City, it was, it's much more important if Kelly could win because he's been the biggest attraction that they've had since Arturo Gatti. But he's got to make it close. Hard right hand by Pavlik. Martinez comes back and lands two rights in a row. That's one thing you see in Martinez. If you get in a shot against him, he wants to balance the scorecard yeah. immediately. Martinez is having a problem really landing on Kelly, too, to some degree. Kelly's doing a pretty decent job. There's the best punch of the fight so far for Pavlik, and that 
is exactly what Pavlik predicted about Martinez, that he might come in awkwardly, that he might mistime one of his rushes and get caught with a shot. I That's think, what happened. I think he was on his feet. I think Kelly was on his, uh, Martinez's feet at the same time. But regardless, it looked good. And if he keeps doing what he's doing now, he's on his way to turning this fight around. There's a swelling around the right eye now of Sergio Martinez. The crowd senses that Pavlik is getting himself back into the fight. And they're trying to help him get there. Listen, listen, listen. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Be patient. Don't just stay there. Don't just stay there for nothing in the world. You got to move, move, and get out of there. You understand, okay? Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Yes. Try. When he goes back, just like we trade. Attack him. Nice round. Nice round. You just got to push him back. Go to that body, like you said. But when you get this son of a bitch on the inside. Here you can see, as I said earlier, Kelly did land a good shot, but a lot of it was probably been more, made it more effective with the fact that Martinez was off balance. When, and when you fight the style that Martinez fights on, he gambles a lot. He's always out of position a lot of times, but he usually gets away because of his speed. The fifth round was Pavlik's best round. 17 out of 45, CompuBox. Martinez, 14 out of 43. Pavlik, 10 out of 29 jabs in that round. Harold Letterman gave the round to Kelly Pavlik. Now we go to the sixth. Martinez's nickname on his trunks is Maravilla. Translates to Marvel, as in Maravilla Marvin Hagler. One thing I think Pavlik has done is he's neutralized the lead left hands of Martinez, which were getting through easily in the first couple of rounds. I think in overall his defense is a lot better than yeah, he's we're giving keeping him his right hand yeah, up. Yeah, he's more. picking off a lot of punches a lot, and he seemed to have gotten adjusted to Martinez's rhythm now. And uh, Martinez is having a problem of actually landing. He does a lot of nice movement, but doing something effective right, come on, come on, from the come on, come on. offensive viewpoint, he's he's been a little short in the last couple of rounds. He did have two fights in 2009, did Pavlik, uh, and both of them were against lesser opponents. Rubio and Espino, and uh, he knocked them both out. Didn't get a lot of credit for it, but nevertheless, handled his mandatories, kept his title belts. And right now, you see actually Kelly is out boxing Martinez. He's yep. actually taking a step back and counting with his jab, and the Martinez is having a problem now of, of even controlling his balance. And Martinez is going to have to search for another answer now that Pavlik go, seems to be on, figuring out the first fight plan right, and what to do on, against it. Yeah, I think Kelly now has just adjusted and got a little comfortable with fighting this particular style uh, because he hasn't fought a moving fighter like this in his career, to my knowledge. Even Bernard was not a moving fighter, but he seems to have adjusted to the rhythm now. Manny, you sound like you think he's doing better than you thought he would. Yeah, I think he's doing very good because he's actually, to me, outboxing him. With, with, hey, hey, stop, stop, hey, come on, man, come on, man. Crowd got very excited about a right hand, but it wasn't a big impact. But even when Martinez throws his left hand, it's more like a it's a weak left hand. It's more almost like his head bent. He doesn't have a strong, solid drive straight through left hand. So even when he hits Kelly, it's more of a show type punch and a point getter, but not really an effective punch. Does more damage with his right hook. Yeah, you see Kelly cross the left hand with his right glove. 
Keep piling up these rounds, baby. If you missed the premiere, tune in Tuesday night for Real Sports. Where are we at? What round? It's a special boxing edition looking into the untimely deaths of champions Alexis Arguello, Vernon Forrest, now, and Arturo Gatti. And mark your calendars for Broad Street Bullies, the HBO Sports feeling, documentary baby? about the legendary Good. Philadelphia Good. Flyers of the 1970s, premiering Lucky. May 4. Watch out, guys. All right, listen to me. When he jumps back and forth, back and forth from side to side, as soon as we catch him coming into our hook, throw that 3-2. Okay, he's jumping, jumping, jumping. He's, his hands are down. When he starts wiggling them shoulders, jab at the chest. Don't get caught in no horse play with this fucking kid. All right, good job. Way to be patient. Take your time, babe. All right, take the bucket. You may have noted that CompuBox saw Pavlik doubling Martinez as connects in the sixth. Kelly Pavlik seeming to mount a comeback in the fight. 10 of 23 jabs in that round. And Harold, how do you have it through six? Attention. 58-56, four rounds to two, Sergio Martinez. Jim, I thought what he did in the first four rounds was ring generalship because he kept Kelly Pavlik off balance. But in rounds five and six, Kelly Pavlik started to move his hands. He really started to throw some punches, get off first, you know, land that left jab, follow it with a straight right hand, and he was hurting Martinez. Landing better solid shots, because like you said, he's 11 pounds heavier. Anyway, four to two, Sergio Martinez. Watch your feet, watch your feet. There's a good solid left jab by Kelly and then followed it with a few seconds later with a good solid right. Two of the best punches I've saw in the fight. You know, regardless of who's winning, one thing is clear. Martinez shows Kelly Pavlik a great deal more respect than he showed to Paul Williams. Yes. He walked in on Williams. He doesn't do that to Kelly Pavlik. Pavlik, of course, is a bigger man than Williams. He's thinking that it shouldn't have been ruled a knockdown. I can't see how. He caught a solid shot and went down on his butt. But he's off balance a lot the way he fights. If, if a fighter goes down because he's off balance, it's still it's, a knockdown. If it's it's his a blow. Yeah, it's his fault. Whose fault is it? No, it's, 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 <laughs> clear. it's a knockdown. He wouldn't have went down if he hadn't have been hit. Exactly. So now it's possible that Pavlik has gone ahead in the fight. Assuming that he gets a two-point round here in the seventh. Well, even when Martinez lands his left, I'm looking, there's really no power. You see what it is? Those are more like a jab type left compared to Kelly's right hands. And, and Kelly's jabs are much more powerful. It, it's, it's almost hard to remember how Pavlik looked in the first three rounds of the fight like he couldn't ever get back into it. He and his trainer, Jack Lord, made a tremendous transition and adjusted to everything that's going on. Even though the shots are from Martinez, no power on him. Point getters at, at the most. And now Kelly's picking most of those off him. Well, it appeared Martinez went as far as he could go with the all-elusive style. And now, as the fight progresses, if Martinez wants to win it, he's probably going to have to fight more bravely. Come on, Sergio, listen. 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 You've got to work that double jab. Work the double jab. And turn him. You can't stay there any longer. Because he's waiting for us, and he throws the hands. He's got a lot of reach, and he can't, he can't get in. You've got to work the double jab. Double jab, and when you throw that straight hand, attack with that straight hand. Don't open it up. Throw it straight. Don't loop it. Straight to the chest. Come on, baby. Here we see Kelly Pavlik come in, landing the shot. But once again, the fact that Martinez is moving so fast that he's often all out of balance and position, and he's trying to regain his balance right there for the most part. And he was hit before he went down, so it's officially a knockdown. Yeah, when he when he leaps in with those punches, and if they land, he gets credit for them, whether he's on balance or not. He's claiming that Kelly Pavlik steadied him with the left hand across his neck and held him there to put him in position for the right hand punch. 
Lennox Lewis did that to Michael Grant in Madison Square Garden and got away with it. And uh, Kelly Pavlik got away with it tonight against Sergio Martinez. And fighters have been yeah. doing it for 120 yeah, years. Yeah, but that's the difference. Lennox knocked him out. So it was, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was no, an but, argument over a knockdown, legitimate or not. But right now, you may see a lot more of that from Martinez because Kelly's putting more pressure on him, making him get out of position, crossing his legs more. And then you still have that natural size of about 11 pounds of natural strength. So the faster man was winning the fight for the first two or three rounds. And the bigger man has been winning the fight since then. Kelly Pavlik making good tactical adjustments, doing a better job of cutting off the ring, doing a better job of eluding Sergio Martinez's jab and cross, and ultimately putting Martinez on his pants. And by cutting off the ring as well as he has, he's made Martinez move perhaps more, laterally more than he'd like to. Yeah, and then, well, he's got, he's got Martinez's rhythm down now. So this is what Martinez will have to do, is fight more bravely and We're take more risks that lead to that kind of thing. Well, the way Martinez delivers his punches from waist down, it's hard for him to put a combination together of two or three punches. The most he can do is get one punch or two at a time off. Just like he said, he cannot put combinations fluidly together. Look, as Jim pointed out earlier, Martinez got into the gym when he was 20. And what he's doing is using his athleticism, his intelligence, to fight the way he is. I think that's a great way to describe it. He's hardly a classically trained fighter, but he's a very effective one. He's about as good as you can get for somebody who entered the gym at 20. Kelly Pavlik fought as a kid. Yep, I, I remember taking him to some of the tournaments because he's in the region. Uh, Let's go, let him as go, a let him go. 13-year-old kid. There was a punch that Pavlik blocked that he was not blocking earlier in the fight. Yeah, he's catching a lot of those left-hand shots with his right glove now. And he's out jabbing. He's jabbing over top of Martinez's jab, which is a great move. And that's one of the advantages when you're tall, if you can do that. You pick off and parry the other guy's jab, and you jab back right over top of that. And he's doing that very effectively now. Reducing Martinez for a while to more and more awkward shots, less and less power, less and less effective. Nice. In this round, Martinez stepped up and fought more bravely, but he took punishment as the result of it. Kelly's doing what I said, he should work off his jail. Throwing that right hand, keep that chin down, okay? Quit chasing that Fred head, baby. We were doing good there, okay? Quit chasing that head, quit looking for that big right hand, okay? I want you to go right here, right here. He's gonna run into it. He's ducking every single time. Quit aiming at that head. He's elusive, he's going back and forth. Aim at these shoulders, aim at the chest. He's gonna run into something. Here you see Kelly right now come back with a counter jab of his own, and this is typifying what is happening in the fight at this stage right now. He's actually outboxing and outtiming Martinez. Kelly Pavlik has done a great job of thinking his way through the fight tonight. Copy box numbers through eight, almost even. Pavlik 113 of 342, Martinez 118 of 373. Harold Letterman, as you see, gave the last round to Pavlik, and now with the knockdown point in the preceding round, Pavlik leads on the scorecards, or at least on Letterman's scorecard. Well, well, you know, the fight is close, but I just like the power enough that you see in Kelly Pavlik's punches as compared to Martinez. And if it keeps going like this and it's close, Kelly's probably going to win the fight because his punches are more effective. Now there's a cut on the right eye of Kelly Pavlik. So Martinez's left-hand punch moments ago has opened a cut, which I believe is under the right eye of Pavlik. That's what it looks like, Jim. On the cheek. And I don't know how experienced this cut man is uh, in taking care of two cuts. But it's re-energizing so Martinez. It's giving Martinez yeah. new life. He's suddenly encouraged by what he's seen. And he's going yeah. after Pavlik much more than in the two preceding yeah. rounds. 
And, and Talia slowed down a lot. Pavlik is bothered by the cut. There's a lot of blood coming out of that right eye. Martinez's speed is becoming a factor again. Uh, Martinez knows he has to be right, more stop aggressive. Running, stop, running. stop running laterally and start moving into his target. And he's doing that very, very effectively right now. He said that he would go for a knockout tonight. A lot of us scoffed at that and said, sure you will. And now he may need it. Well, this, this round right here is totally reversed. It's all Martinez all the way. He's turned and the they, fight back around, and he is bloodying Kelly yeah. Pavlik. He's totally shut Kelly out of the fight. This is impressive. This is a guy who was yeah. going south in a hurry and now has turned it around. What a fight we've got going now. Pavlik with a right hand. Martinez has had his best round since the first two. This is the most decisive round of the entire fight. And it's all Martinez. Pavlik missed with the right hand. Now he lands one. Hard left hand by Martinez. Look at Kelly Pavlik's face. A bloody mask. And now there's a heavy flow of blood from both below and above the right eye, I believe. And Martinez is showboating. It's going to be very tough for the cut man, anyone, to stop both of those cuts. I don't think that his cut man, Sam Brownback, is experienced in dealing with this year. It's tough stopping one cut, but two cuts plus some serious swelling. Pavlik trying to unload a right hand. He realizes things are conspiring against him now. So a bloody Kelly Pavlik will go to the corner with blood flowing from both eyes. A rejuvenated what? Sergio Martinez is back in the fight. Don't say it. If you say it, let me do my job. Look at that. He's all right. Kelly, you got to fire with this kid. You got you to gotta fucking fire. You got to fire, man. You understand me? Let your damn hands go. You're standing straight in the middle with this kid. You're standing just straight in the middle and just letting him throw. So one, two, one, two, one, two, three. Here you see the left hand that landed right in the eye that caused the cut and the swelling on the right eye of Kelly. And seemingly from that point on, everything else went downhill. Here you see later around another left hand that came straight through. Look at the blood fly through the air. Martinez punished Pavlik in the round. And there you see that the cut man has not managed to stop the bleeding. He's still flowing. They came nowhere close to cutting the bleeding. Copy box numbers through nine. Martinez back in charge. Harold, how do you have it? Look at you. In rounds of getting five for Martinez, but you know, in points, 85, 85, all even. So whoever wins the last three rounds on my card wins the fight. Uh, did you uh, consider uh, a 10-8 round in that round, Oh, Harold? absolutely, Jim. It was very close to 10-8. I really was a little disappointed the fact that the cut man didn't seemingly do hardly anything to the right eye, which is the most serious one. Uh, you know, it, it, it comes out with blood still spurting out. And that's, at least you start off with a dry, maybe it might just bleed as the round progresses, but this is very tough, and I don't think Kelly Pavlik is used to fight under those conditions. He's not an Arturo Gaddy. If he's going to win the fight now, he's going to win it with blood streaming head, down his face. Head. Let him go, let that him go. was Arturo Gatti style. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And we are in Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City. Yeah. Well, he needs to become Arturo Gatti. He's got to punch with full power. With every punch he throws, that would be full power. He's got to be very physical and then just let everything go. Because of the knockdown, this is a very close fight. And Martinez may have to win the remaining rounds to get a decision. But he looks like he could. The three judges who will score this fight come from Canada, New Jersey, and Puerto Rico. This is why it's a good case like this. Sometimes it's good for the trainer himself to have a good cut solution because this happens, and maybe he could work on one cut while the other, the regular cut man, could get in and work on the other cut. Emmanuel, we know about judges scoring blood. It makes it harder for Pavlik to win a round looking like this. Yes, it does. And also, it's a psychological saving effect on him, also. He is certainly not as assertive as he was two rounds ago. How could he be? 
Martinez may have blinded him in there. Hard right hand by Pavlik. Cuts come from hand speed. Yeah, but it's too much time in between Pavlik's attacks. He lands a good shot, but it's so much time there. It seems like maybe, in addition to the cut, he may be actually getting tired. And Martinez is back in charge. He's taunting Pavlik as he lands from distance. Kelly is not used to having to move this much leader when opponent is making him use the ring a lot more than he has had to use in the past. He almost had Martinez trapped in the corner with a chance to do something, but Martinez stepped away. Pavlik came on in the middle rounds and looked like he was winning the fight, but Martinez, to his credit, stepped it up and has now seized control. Good luck to Kelly Pavlik making it through the 11th and 12th like this. Wipe him down good. Come on, get that face cleaned up. He's all right. Wipe him down. Give me another towel. Oh, he's all right. Yeah, let me work. He's all right. Give it up. Come on, we're okay. The other side? The other side is fine. All right. Do you guys have any surgery cell? Yeah, that's how I'm using. All right. I'm using thromboplasty. All right, let's go. I have it. No, no, we're all right. Kel. Wipe his face down. I can't. I don't have enough of hands. Give me a, give me. I need a towel. Right here's one in his hand. Right. Here you go. Thank you. Thank Kel, you. You ha you're giving away these rounds. He, come on, no, you can't. You fucking can't. Now push. Martinez has landed 60 punches in the last two rounds to 28 for Pavlik. And with two rounds to go, the Argentine fighter is clearly in control of the fight, though perhaps it's still even or close to even on the scorecard. What happens in the last two rounds? Pavlik landed a hard right hand. That was his best punch in two rounds. Well, usually at a close fights, going down and stretch, usually the fighter with the speed usually always pulls those fights out. Unless the guy can, the puncher can land that one big punch. But usually the flashy fighters usually pull fights out to the end. Which means that it would favor Martinez going down the stretch. He landed a solid right hand shot, and now the blood begins to flow on Pavlik's right eye again. Left eye is just a trickle. Right eye becomes a gusher, particularly if oh, Martinez oh, oh, makes contact with the left hand. Watch your feet, watch your feet. There's a left hand onto the right eye, and there comes the blood. Right hand lands for Pavlik. Martinez has taken more risks in the last three rounds, coming back from the knockdown, and that's what paid off by opening Pavlik's face up. All right, stop punching. Let him go, let him go. It wasn't the ring generalship that would have won this fight for Martinez if he winds up winning it. It will be the ring gutsmanship and the ring punchmanship. If Jack Lowe gave, All right hand by tablet. gave Kelly the right instruction, he told him, you got to let those punches go because when you punch with the power that he still has and the way that Martinez is always out of balance and out position, he could easily score another off-balance knockdown, which could still save him. But he can't do anything if he doesn't let the punches go. Raleigh in Atlantic City as 154-pound champion Sergio Martinez tries to win the middleweight title. Against the taller, stronger, 11 pounds heavier tonight, Kelly Pavlik. Martinez's speed is putting him back in position to win the fight. See that? It's almost even though. He got hit himself. He almost got another one of those off-balance knockdowns. Yep. He cut in. He just let punches go. He's got nothing to lose right now at this stage the way the fight is going. And Martinez is the all-out aggressor. The tide has turned. Havlick lands one punch at a time. Martinez, too, but Martinez is landing more. Solid left hand lands for Martinez, and another combination. Havlik can't see the punches coming.
Listen, listen, listen what I'm telling you. Listen. Keep hitting him. Keep hitting him, you ass. Keep hitting him. You see what you did at the end? When you see him hurt, throw punches. Keep throwing punches. Keep working it. This round real big. You gotta push, Cal. You gotta push like you've never pushed. All right. Come on, babe. You gotta push. You gotta push as hard as you could. Come on. We gotta push Kel. You gotta push him back. We need to win this round. Okay? We need to win this round big. You gotta stop this motherfucker. So Jack Lowe coming very close to telling Kelly Pavlik that he needs a knockout. First he says you gotta win this round big. Then he says you gotta stop him. Martinez's trainer insisting to him, just keep hitting him. Don't stop throwing punches. We've got high drama in the 12th round. In the 11th, Martinez landed 29 to only 14 for Pavlik. You can see that on Harold Letterman's card now, Martinez has a two-point cushion Come to the 12. We have to remember that in two American fights against Cintron, where he got a draw, and against Paul Williams, where he lost a majority decision, that Martinez did not get the, the fair result, according to many observers. So well, he certainly not against Cintron, and he didn't get the benefit of the doubt against Williams, Larry. Right, so he knows that he has to still do business here. He, he cannot coast hoping that blood is going to decide this issue. No, in fact, I think if I were his trainer, Emmanuel, I'd have told Martinez, you've got to win the round. I would tell my, it's right, I, you know, and, and because, you know, sometimes even though you're just moving away, you don't know how this crowd and the officials may take it as running and give the round to Pavlik. I would say you need to win this round just like you did the last two. Well, he stepped in there with another yeah. one of those flurries. Close the show. All great course, fighters close the show. The more Pavlik bleeds, the better the chance that Martinez will win the round. Let me ask you something, Emmanuel. If Martinez wins the fight, Pavlik has a rematch clause. Does he take it? Yes, because it's been that competitive. He'll say, well, I was doing very well in the middle rounds until I got the cut. And so that would be an excuse to himself. So he would exercise that right to take the rematch. Larry, was there another title defense option here for Kelly Pavlik? Could he have dodged Sergio Martinez's speed? I'm not sure there's anybody out there. It's a thin division. The only way he could have dodged that would be a, have been to make a fight with Paul Williams. They had it on three different times and it fell through for various reasons having to do with injury and money. That was the fight that everybody wanted. And I think you're right, but this is the only credible fight I think that the American public would want to see in the middleweight division because it's a division that's void of too many marquee names anyway. So this, if not Paul Williams, I think this was the best fight that could be made and that the public would buy in America. Kelly Pavlik's in there boxing with Sergio Martinez and Annual. I think he needed to go after him. Yeah, he should have been very much more aggressive as well. Oh, oh, oh. Martinez almost went down unbalanced again. I'm not sure whether he hurt his right hand or just wanted to celebrate for the crowd. Oh. With 10 seconds to go, Martinez is again in command. Pavlik is streaming blood, and the Argentine fighter is doing what he wants to do. Sergio Martinez is going to celebrate right now. He believes he has lifted the middleweight championship from Kelly Pavlik. Pavlik is not in position to celebrate. He needs to get the blood off his face. A tremendous rally in the late rounds by Sergio Martinez, just at the point when Kelly Pavlik seemed completely in control of the fight. The Argentine fighter came on again, and he did it with risk, Emmanuel. He did a fantastic job. He, after losing about four rounds, he came on and turned the fight completely around. He won the early rounds and the late rounds. Yep. The question will be, how many of the middle rounds did Pavlik get, including a two-point round? <laughs> Harold, what's your final scorecard? Oh, Jim, I got it 115. One throw, Sergio Martinez. But bear in mind, 
that I gave the fourth round to Sergio Martinez, and a lot of judges might give that fourth round to Kelly Pavlik when he did better than he did in rounds one, two, and three. So that might make it a little bit closer. You know, I agree. It could be close, but I got to tell you, after what happened against Kermit Cintron, where he knocked Cintron out, didn't get credit for that. Cintron should have been disqualified for his seconds in the ring, didn't get credit for that, and then didn't get the decision. He has to feel as though anything is possible. Judge, Craig Metcalf of Canada, one title fight, not an experienced judge. This wasn't an easy fight to score. Barbara Perez is an experienced judge, but hasn't had a lot of really big fights. And Roberto Ramirez, 59 title fights in Puerto Rico as a Puerto Rican judge. Arguello Mancini, yeah, that was that was a couple years back. Yeah, well, you see, that score was 125, well, that was 15 rounds. <laughs> Pavlik had a big middle in the fight. He saw the four rounds that he won in a row on Letterman's scorecard, including a two-point round with a knockdown, but the beginning and end of the fight belonged to Sergio Martinez. Only question, how much of the beginning and how much of the end? Was it enough to give him the cushion on the scorecard that he had on Buffer's scorecard? Or excuse me, on, on Letterman's scorecard. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, by way of Caesars Atlantic City, we go to the scorecards. Barbara Perez scores at 115, 111. Roberto Ramirez scores at 116, 111. Craig Metcalf, 115, 112. All to the winner by unanimous decision. And new middleweight champion of the world, Sergio Martinez. So this time, he makes his point. The fighter without a country who left Argentina and eventually left Spain and now lives by himself in Oxnard is the middleweight champion of the world. And final copy box numbers will show you that Martinez ultimately scored a fairly significant margin and landed punches, landing 66 more. All of that margin came in the closing round. He threw 153 more. Havlik dramatically lowered his punch count once both eyes were bleeding. And ultimately, Martinez with the highest connect percentage also. Power shots, Martinez dominates the fight there. Landing 85 more power shots than Pavlik, throwing nearly twice as many, landing at the same connect percentage. Pavlik was more effective with his jab. Martinez won the fight big in the power zone category. Punch zone, and you can see where the punches landed on Pavlik, mostly to the head. Martinez, not that much of a body puncher, and he went to the head, as you see, 189 times. Kelly Pavlik only landed 22 punches to the body on Sergio Martinez. He might have done better if he could have gotten to Martinez's rib cage more. Let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Sergio. You won the early rounds easily, and the middle rounds were very hard for you. Pavlik seemed to solve you. How did you decide to fight the last stage of the fight? Esto es un plan a 12 asaltos, y primero intenté buscar la distancia. Luego supe que Pavlik iba a sacar su pasta y casta de campeón. It's a 12, it's a 12 round plan. And I knew that uh, we had to find our range and our distance. And I knew that in the, in the long run, he would show his, his true championship colors. But I knew that at the end, I had to close it off strongly and finish off positively you, in the show of my career. You had two very close fights in which you did not get the decision here in the US. And you accepted the fact that the visitor has a harder time getting a close decision. Is that why you attacked him at the end? Sí, era un plan de pelea. Sabíamos de las flaquezas de Pavlik y y sabía que sé que yo soy visitante aquí y tengo que hacer siempre un poquitito más para poder ganar. It's a 12-round plan, and obviously we know the difficulties that a visitor has, and I knew we had to press at the end, and it would be hard to win it. You are. 
an Argentine who lives in the United States now. You called the middleweight championship the queen of championships for your countrymen. What does it feel like to win that fight now? Se siente un orgullo tremendo, increíble y una emoción que imposible de describir ahora. It's a tremendous pride and an emotion that I and I can't explain it at this moment. Will you go back to Argentina to celebrate? Do you think they will celebrate you? Celebrarán contigo. Sí, sí. Espero que me reciban como siempre con los brazos abiertos y le saludo a Osnar primero porque tengo al gimnasio World Cross Sport. They will receive me. They will receive me with open arms in Argentina, as they always do. But I want to say hello to everyone in Oxnard at the gym in Oxnard. A toda mi familia, a la gente de mi ciudad, Quilmes y de Argentina. The entire family, my entire family, everyone at Quilmes, all of Argentina. Y a los chicos de españoles que vinieron a visitarme y a y a apoyarme como siempre. And all the Spaniards that came to to give me support, as they always do. Uh, you have a rematch clause. Tiene una cláusula de revancha. Will you fight him again? And if he doesn't fight you again, do you want to fight Williams? Lucharás contra Williams. Cuando quiera, con cualquiera de los dos, porque son grandísimos boxeadores y para mí es un orgullo enfrentarme a ellos. Whenever, whomever wants it, and for me it's a great pride, a great honor to fight them both. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, Kelly. You seem out of the fight for three rounds. You seem to seize control for four or five rounds. What happened in the last stage of the fight? No, he, he caught you. Catch me, he caught me. I um, mean, I was fighting an upper battle with the with the cuts and and him. I mean, he started moving. He adapted, and uh, he, he knew I was having a hard time seeing. I think so. Uh, it was just an uphill uh, battle after that. You know, we tried, and it was just hard. I mean, he fought a smart, great fight at the end. How did you solve what he was doing in the early rounds to take control in the middle rounds? I was just using my feints and I was jabbing as he was coming in. You know, he was hopping in and a jab. I started establishing a jab, even some right hands, and and uh, you know. But then after, he came, I think it was the eighth round or ninth round, and he came out and he just caught me with a nice left hand and, and it cut me. It wasn't a headbutt or anything, and uh, you know, from there it was just a battle back and it was hard to see the punches. How how did the cuts affect you? I couldn't see. Uh, it was like a weight out my right eye, and you know, like I said, it, it was just an uphill battle. And I, you know, I was still able to see punches coming, but he fought a smart fight. I mean, he would double up on that left hand. You know, I would see, I would see the first one, I block it, he double up, and uh, nothing I could really do about it. Were you surprised how aggressive he became in the late rounds? Not really. I mean, a fighter is like a like a shark. I mean, when they see blood, they smell blood, they go after it, and. Uh, you know, he was probably looking, hopefully, for a stoppage. You know, the referee stopped the fight due to the cut. Um, he wasn't hurting me or anything like that. It was just he was catching me with punches, and it looked looked bad. And uh, you know, there was nothing we could do about it. You have a rematch clause, but it seems that you might have had a difficult time making 160 pounds. Do you want to exercise that rematch clause? I hate losing, Larry. I mean, it was. It was hard making 160, but it's always uh, it's always hard making 160. So uh, yeah, you know that's the thing. We're gonna go back this time. We are gonna go back to the drawing board, and uh, you know definitely uh, the rematch clause is intact. All right. So you intend to f to fight him again? You're just 28 years old. It seems like you've been through a lifetime already in the ring. Yeah, it's been a long career, believe it or not. I mean, it took me a while to get the title shot. Uh, this June will be 10 years, but uh, still a young man. So we got more to do. Thank you very much for a gallant effort. Oh, thank you. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Larry Merchant, the classy Kelly Pavlik, uh, acknowledging what happened in the ring, sportsmanlike, a gentleman to the finish, uh, all credit to Kelly. But Sergio Martinez, a guy who never entered the boxing gym until he was 20 years old, wins the middleweight championship. Emmanuel, he's got close to 50 fights in my personal view. He's got one loss against Margarito 10 years ago. This is an amazing fighter. He is truly an amazing fighter. Even you go back to that loss, it was just bad situation, bad time in his career. But he's an amazing fighter. An athlete, I would say, more so than the word fighter. He's an amazing athlete. And what he accomplished tonight and the way he closed the show was amazing. He I holds believe. the legitimate middleweight championship of the world. He still has a 154-pound title. 
he's probably going to let the 154 go and stay at middleweight, right? That's what I would say, but to be honest with you, the 154 is where more glory and, and names are at right now. 160 is just him and Kelly Pavlik, and that's about it. It's not a glamour division at this point of time. All of those welterweights that want to move up and fight for junior middleweight titles, that was probably where I would seriously consider maybe going back to. That's going to be where the money's going to be at. Should Pavel go to 168 now? I think he definitely should. As I said before, he was he was coming in the ring too big, too uh, too big. Right. 178 for a one for a middleweight fight tonight. He got out quick to Gan, just as was the case uh, against Hopkins. This time, an entirely different kind of fighter does it to him. Larry, what are your final thoughts? Well, as I said earlier, blessed are the risk takers, but sometimes the risk doesn't work out. Although, giving Martinez credit. His risks in the late rounds did turn out well. Kelly Pavlik is only 28. A couple of years ago, they were saying he'd be the savior of boxing. Things do change. Things do change. They do indeed. And they can change back the other way, too. All right, thank you very much, Larry. Thank you for watching our terrific doubleheader tonight. Let's take a look back at what has happened over the course of the evening. First, in Montreal at the Bell Center, the beloved Romanian-born, now Canadian fighter Lucian Bute scored a spectacular third round knockout win over Edison Miranda. Miranda walked right in to a Bute uppercut. That was that. And the unbeaten Bute continues in his perch atop the 168-pound weight class. Meanwhile, here in Atlantic City, a tumultuous fight between Kelly Pavlik and Sergio Martinez. Martinez dominating the first four rounds with his hand speed and foot speed. Pavlik coming back in the middle rounds and putting Martinez on the canvas. And then the gutty Martinez turning the fight once again in his direction with big punches that produced a bloody mask on Pavlik's face.